Hello all, I'm Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com, sometimes known as Dr. Groovy. <laughs> okay, I'm here to, yep, you see it right in the uh, title above. You're like, oh no, not this guy again talking about him and his tone woods. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to give you the actual whole story on guitars and tone woods and um, pickup windings and magnets and shielding and um, potting the pickups and all the way on down the line from the beginning to the end but I'm not going to take up hopefully not a whole lot of time just yammering um, just to kind of let you know what does and what does not make a difference everything here is fact it is not my version of the truth um, you can of course call me out on anything you want to it won't make a difference but you can call me out on it um, again everything here is stated is 100% true none of it's just my visions and my head dancing around okay so anyway the first um, electric instrument came about back in the 1920s um, you're looking in the 1930s I guess is when uh, Rickenbacker uh, did his frying pan um, do some history, go look, it's not a beautiful thing. You know, and they were doing the lap steels and electrifying them, and then doing the uh, arch top guitars and uh, so forth in the 40s and, you know, just trying to get the guitar up there so it could be out front, you know, because horns are loud. You play in with, you know, you're playing with an orchestra. That was the reason, you know, because there were no rock bands or that type of thing. They were blues stuff where the uh, guitar really needed to come up but mainly it was because of orchestral music um, the guitars just could not keep up with the horn section so they had to look for a way to beef them up so they started taking you know the already made um, arch top guitars that were not electric and um, everything was pretty much single coil pickups at the time uh, electro voice yeah, made a uh, humbucking um, coil uh, for microphones back in about 19, God, I'm thinking 34, but it was just on a microphone, but they, you know, knew how to make it shut the heck up, and they discontinued it the next year, and then uh, uh, Seth over at Gibson, he uh, did a hum the first humbucking pickup that we all recognize in about 1955. And of course, um, Gibson was strictly, or all companies were strictly single coil up to that point. And Fender, it took them a long time um, to start using them also. But nothing wrong with the single coils, they all have their place, you know. It's like, still, the Stratocaster is the number one selling guitar and most copied guitar ever in the history of the world. So there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Um, personal preference all the way down the line. So. They got the guitars up to where they could get to a certain level here in the 40s uh, that they could keep up with the orchestras, okay? And we all know the story uh, with uh, Les Paul uh, after he did his train track experiment and then went out and made the infamous guitar called the Log, um, trying to get people to notice um, that a solid body electric guitar could be and would be very useful. Um, so he built the thing, which was essentially just a big block of pine. Yeah, pine. Um, what Fender make his guitars out of? Pine. It's very soft and it bends easy. It, you know, we didn't know a whole lot about guitars then. But um, this here's from the beginning to the end, and I'll try to make it go quicker. Anyway, of course, the log was just a simple. It was the neck and it was the body and everything, just all one big old piece. And then Les just took a couple sides, like this over here and this side over here, snapped them onto each side, or they actually just fit in, and would take them to the gigs. And he could turn the amps up louder because the pickups wouldn't feed back nearly as quick as a hollow body guitar. Okay, the reason the pickups feed back so much with a hollow body. Um, number one, the pickups weren't potted yet, which means um, dipped in wax, which is usually about 70% paraffin wax and 30% beeswax. And 
Um, sometimes they would dip them just a little bit. Sometimes they do the whole things underneath the covers. Every every little piece, top bottom, and it gets rid of all the crap. So it actually will reject everything, everything except for what the strings are doing. Okay, so that was to come later. Um, so with the undipped um, pickups, you know they would still feed back because they're microphonic, is what it's called. Um, Pickups and microphones are kind of the same. Microphones have a voice coil that's actually a diaphragm, which, of course, pickups don't. Um, a pickup is basically just, let's go to the earliest ones, like the ceramic uh, magnets, and you have go way back, of course, to um, the Alnico magnets. Um, it's just a simple magnet with copper wire wrapped around it and around it and around thousands of times um, and that's a beast. basically all you need to make a pickup is that <laughs> and it can pick up your strings and that's what it's supposed to do but thing is when it's not potted it, it still picks up everything else so that's why there is um, the main debate between tone woods and all that kind of thing is because like, especially with Fender um, use it use totally unpotted pickups until after the CBS sale. So in 1965, they started messing around with potting their pickups. So all the guitars from 1948 all the way up through 1964 were all completely microphonic pickups, no potting at all. So um, the only difference between them and what we're using today is the potting. So. Um, the whole deal of having the solid body guitar was to get rid of hearing everything because yes, um, pickups like these, the soap bars or your P90s or what have you, uh, they are microphonic, they are unpotted, these were, were always used, this type of a thing, in the 40s, in the 50s and still today. And some, like this one, are still unpotted. They have nothing here. Uh, people would quite often later on in the mid 60s all of a sudden Marshall lamps start coming out when your music started really changing and it's no more uh, symphony orchestras and so forth that need guitar players. You're getting, you know, cream and everybody coming out and they're playing through 100 watt Marshalls and then they have to take their, you know, 335s, at least got, you know, some wood in the middle here <laughs> and they'll semi hollow and thinner, but they would still take like t shirts. Wad them up, cram them in here, and try to make them solid to try to get rid of all that feedback that happens just because that pickup is picking up everything. Okay? So, yeah, you could, no matter what, everything affected everything. Where you stood, if you pointed this way, that way, this way, if you put your hand over here, did this, the pickup would pick up everything. So, if your guitar was thin, it would sound thin. If it was made with real thick wood, but still not, but still hollow, it would sound more dense. Therefore, is where everybody starts getting kind of messed up on this whole thing. Um, again, Les Paul um, kept trying to push his solid body guitar on, you know, to people, and they just wouldn't go for it way back when. And he played that thing for, God, 10, 12 years, until after Fender released his guitars. And finally, Gibson's like, well, where's that one nut? You know, so we got we to gotta get in on this solid body thing because Fender just took off, you know, big time. Everybody was playing guitars. And um, so Gibson had to get in on it. I don't know if you know it or not, but of course, the Les Paul, as we know it, as it is um, shaped. Let me put this guitar down. Um, was not designed by Les Paul. So this shape... Da, 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 that everybody has, you know, grown up with their entire life. Um, that was not designed by Les Paul. That was just designed in Gibson. And they finally said, hey, you know, we want to make you a signature guitar now. And they showed him that thing. And it's like, okay, let's do your solid body thing. And that would become that. Of course, Fender was over there doing his Telecaster body. And it, go, it going through four or five different changes in names. Uh, due to different patent things, you know, 
with drum companies. They would come up with the same name and go to. And anyway, it's not about the names. Um, so you're going through the mid '60s, and everybody's still unpotted. You know, the pickups still aren't potted. So the guitars are getting louder now, and they're going through Marshalls, but they're still squealing like a pig. Okay. So somebody finally said, "Okay, we got to shut this crap up." Okay. So up until this point, so yeah, you're looking at 25 years of electric guitars, where yes everything made a difference in the electric guitar and the microphonic unpotted pickups 100 percent yes if the guitar wood was that thick if it was that thick if it was that thick if it was this deep if it was this deep everything the shape of the guitar everything mattered and then finally over trials and tribulations um it stopped mattering more and more as you know progress took over and some people don't like that progress and some people still love the old stuff which is fine it's still being made exactly like it was back when people love the microphonic pickups they want it to sound they still like to grab that old 1952 Les Paul that 1950 no caster or get the old 52 telly or whatever and they still love the sound of those old guitars with the unpotted pickups they're going to feed back but they still have a sound to them that none of the others do okay and thing is also remember this um those guitars are old <laughs> okay everybody's like a vintage guitar sounds like no other that is true also um again back with the ceramic not the ceramic the alnico magnets i have so much ceramic on the brain today um, the Alnico magnets, um, they actually lose their magnetism. They, it's called degaussing. Um, the magnetism to it, so therefore your output strength, the whole entire sound of the guitar, the whole pickup, um, starts going to crap quicker than any other magnetic material uh, kind of magnet. Um, so you got to consider that too. Uh, generally, the old guitars from the early 50s right now are ranging at about 30% uh, loss on, a, on an average. Some more, some less. And I'll tell you why. Um, people have a tendency, have you ever just, for whatever reason, I don't care if you're a pro or not, if you're a pro person who has, you know, like brought in some PA speakers or you just have an amplifier in your house, you got your amp sitting there, then you go take your guitar and you just kind of set it, lean it against the amp or whatever and let it sit there. Um, you're killing your pickups, kids. <laughs> there are magnets in your speakers. So you don't want to put your guitar anywhere <laughs> near your speakers. Um, again, an old trick, yeah. Walk up to the wall of amplifiers and stick your pickups right in there. It's not a good thing. <laughs> you know, even stick it in the back of a trailer in a case and it's right in between the two subs that have these two great big, you know, 18 inch subs in them. And, all these magnets around. Have you ever put a magnet on the front of a television set, especially the old tube type TVs? Um, <laughs> your color all goes to one state place and you can't get it back out. You can't get it degaussed. You can't, you can take the magnet and actually spread the color back out, but it won't go in the right place. That's, that's true. Try that sometime. Spend five dollars on a crappy old TV that was a thousand dollars five years ago but they sell them at the pawn shops now that aren't flat screens and just take a magnet to it have some fun but you'll see what I'm talking about so this happens to guitars too so you don't lay them on amps you don't put them near speakers this will totally destroy your pickups but anyway this happens over time as well so the pickups will age everything will age the wood will age and it's not for the better um, unless you like that sound Okay, you ha will have bought a guitar back in 1952. Say so you're an old dude and you're still around. You're you know old like me and you bought that old Telly in 1952 and loved the way it sounded. Well, just because of the laws of physics, yes, you're probably going to have about 30% um, just magnet strength loss. Boom, gone. Okay, so it's going to sound way different than it did. 
Um, are some going to be perfect just the way they were back then? No, because a rate of decay is a rate of decay. Unless they are enshrined in a tomb and in a vacuum chamber, you can't stop this process. And it still happens with everything today. As everything gets older, it doesn't necessarily get better. It actually is biodegrading. But what happens now is you're starting to see a lot of um, Fender guitars in the, the after they started potting the pickups to shut them the hell up as much as they could and um, not pick up everything. Um, after a while, the potting also by bio bio degrades, and it just it's just wearing away. So it will actually start picking up again different things. Um, the vibration of the body, um, so forth. And let me bring that in real quick. Um, electric guitars were initially um, solid body electric guitars were meant for the body and everything to absorb and kill resonance. It was supposed to eliminate that. So that was the actual thought process behind an electric guitar. We got to get rid of that resonance that is making every flipping thing feedback. So they're getting rid of the trying to make a guitar not resonate. Of course today with all of the technology some people want the guitar to resonate. That's why you have um, 8,000 new guitars different kinds per year released so you can get exactly what you want. If you want the pickups to actually pick up the sound of your guitar, you can have it made that way. If you want it to pick up nothing on your guitar other than the strings, not a problem. That's the way most are pretty much at now. So, what an electric guitar was and what an electric guitar is are very different things. So, people are right in both ball camps depending um, on what you're after. Okay. So to say that wood absolutely makes no difference in a guitar, um, it honestly just depends on when or your preference in pickups, design, sound. If you're old school and you want that, they will build it for you that way. They make total recreations of vintage instruments, so they will howl, screech, whatever, um, the way they used to. You know, you're not... I would say you're not going to get Ted Nugent to put down the Birdland, but he does, and he grabs up the Paul Reed Smith, and away he goes, and, you know, but he's just one of those guys that just takes total advantage of and has learned uh, to control, manipulate, and everything with X marks the spot all over the stage, where those Birdlands are going to feed back on stage, exactly what note they're going to feed back in, and what key, and he'll go to that spot on the stage and just let it wail, because he knows it's going to be there in that key. That harmonic is going to, you know, resonate there if his amp's on, you know, 13 and a half, but it won't on 14 or 13. But on 13 and a half, and he points that way, everything will click. And those unpotted old nasty pickups that are still getting worse and worse and worse, according to us, may be better to Ted. May be better to a lot of you guys. Um, they're doing their thing. So that's kind of it. Um... Everything just changes. Um, acoustic guitars. Um, do they mellow with age? Um, of course they do. They biodegrade with age. Is that good? It depends on who you are. Everything is so personal to each person. Um, I personally am not fond of knowing that I've got a, an acoustic guitar sitting over here that I bought because it was bright. Because it has polyurethane coats this thick on it because I like that okay so I don't want that to go away you know in 40 years if I'm still alive I won't be but I hate to know that that guitar is gonna be down to nothing so a lot of people they will either get a guitar with no finish on it at all or they will just sand the finish off of where they want the wood to actually resonate and make more noise if you take it makes all the difference. Everything with an acoustic makes a difference. Everything with a jazz body guitar, like the uh, 295 uh, Scotty Moore guitar here, um, made a difference then and now. Nothing has been changed. 
except just to prove, you know, protect the innocent. Um, so they are still unpotted pickups, noisy as hell. You can't turn it up as loud as I'm talking on a clean channel or it's going to feed back. But this is faithful to the original. So some people really dig that. They're like, that's the only way that can happen. And I can go get it for, you know, a few hundred bucks instead of, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So they can re recreate all this stuff with no problem at all. So for people to say, um, yeah, on my brand new Stratocaster that has totally potted hum canceling pickups that I can take the neck off and there is a rosewood fingerboard, maple neck, walnut stripe. Okay, so you have this, you have this, and then they want to go put a maple and then maple neck here on the front, on top of there, on the same guitar and switch it out, and then they tell you it's going to sound way different. No, sorry. Um, I know so many people out there have said that that does happen. No, the only thing that can happen there is nothing. Again, uh, good buddy Duncan, he has provided this proof for us, and a lot of people have done the same test he does. And um, again, I'll put those links here. But again, where he can take the entire neck off the guitar while it's still in tune, <laughs> and put it, you know, put it on the meters and everything, and you can watch that even with the neck gone, just the headstock left, but the neck take it away, and the body totally free of no resonance at all in the body. It's, I mean, it's clamped so it can't do nothing. Um, you'll see them, or you have seen them, but none of this stuff makes any difference. So with today's modern guitars, where everything is properly um, wax potted. And you know, and I'm talking today's guitars, meaning from oh, probably let's start at about late '70s. By the time everything was changed over, that they pr pretty much took everything to the extreme. Said, okay, no more noise. We're gonna take pick up. That's when they, in '76 they made the uh, reverse wound pickups, you know, the center ones on the strats, and at least we had two halfway quiet positions. But nowadays, of course, with the lace pickups and the noiseless pickups and so forth, you get zero buzz. There's no need to have a guitar that makes any noise at all if you don't want it, of course, with also the uh, advent of, um, oh, mercy, your um, EMGs and so forth. You know, there's no need for any kind of hum on any guitar. So, um, here's the way you'll tell, easy enough, if you have a guitar whose pick, which pickups um, have been or have not been, or if they need to be repotted, so forth. I might as well just leave this guitar out. <laughs> okay, if I was to plug this in, yeah, if you just tap the pickups right here, it's going to be like a hitting a bass drum, it's gonna, or tick, 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 just loud as hell through your amp. Tap it here, tap it here, tap it anywhere you want to tap it. It's going to sound different everywhere you tap it. You can talk into it like a regular microphone. It's going to come out your, you know, amp. Um, but if you take these pickups out and you just simply have them potted, wax dipped, and done right, um, we're talking in between, I mean, the pickup cover. Yeah, you have to pot it up there too. And in between each screw, it has to be, I mean, done and done well. And then it will not feed back at all. Um, it will not squeal. Doing this, you would not hear that. Even though you hear it here like this, it will not pick that up because it is simply a magnet against whatever gets in the field of the magnetic field. <laughs> okay, so that is it. So if they're properly potted, they're picking up nothing other than the string vibration. That's what it has come down to. So yes, you can have guitars made out of anything you want. You can have them made out of graphite, you can have them made out of plexiglass, you can have them shaped like a fish, you can have no bodies at all, period, um, made out of aluminum what it so, and so forth, and whatever shape you want, and none of it will matter at all if your pickups are properly potted and so forth, you know. So, that's basically it. I will give you a couple more things um, that I did want to talk about. 
in the old days. Um, all the way up again, I'm just going to grab, God, it's, I guess it's somewhat easy to see on here. You guys already know what I'm talking about. Here's a little Gibson Marauder since I don't have any fenders where you can actually see the windings on the pickups. But you know what they are. If you look on the side of this pickup, um, it's encased in epoxy. But you know, it's just wrapped thousands, you know, tens of thousands of times around each coil. You know, so. Um, when you have a humbucking pickup, one is actually uh, has north, so it's um, trying to drag the strings down. And the one next to it has a south pole sticking up, so it's actually trying to push the strings away. So you got one pushing, one pulling, so they're in an out of phase type of situation going on, which is what shuts them up. You know, and then it depends on if you wire them in uh, series or parallel, but. Um, all these windings. Here's another big thing. Um, again, with like everybody, pretty much, um, they were all hand wound from the beginning. The machines did not do that and control that. So f all the way up until 1965, pickups were all hand wound. I mean, tens of thousands of times. And these ladies generally would be responsible for counting each winding. So that's why you you know you change a few windings and you know you get one that's 30 off from the next one, it's going to sound way different. It's just human error. You know today they'll get them exactly the same. But then it won't matter again because of pop variances and so forth. They allow tolerations between um, all your volume and tone pots. They allow for things just to get in the way and sound different. You know, it's just the nature of the beast. It is what it is. So, again, until machines came along and started winding the pickups, they were all over the place. You could, you could, um, like when, it was about the same time again, 65, 66, when they started to get 64, yeah, it was six, actually 64, um, they started, um, doing away with the wound G strings on electric guitars and started going to plain. You know, you could go whichever way you wanted, but if you wanted to play lead, you know, they came finally unwrapped. So people were going to those old strap pickups and with these pull pieces, I'll get the VG here. Okay. You see how the pull pieces are at different heights. Well, people would try to now, since that G string was picking up you know, like way too much. It was too loud now, being with no winding around it like all the others. It was too loud. So people would try to take this. Sometimes that's the magnet. Okay? And then there's not a magnet underneath them. Sometimes it's just the pole pieces that are the magnets. Anyway, but remember the um, coils all around here, they were actually attached directly to the magnets. Okay, now we have stuff around them before they even go around it. But people would start trying to push this in. They would take a hammer and start knocking it in a little bit. But that would actually break the windings in here or it would just like shove, you know, 8,000 wires down or you'd get, take the top off and do something, set it off to one side and you'd break it. And I mean, it's history. And for you, um, so just know that. I mean, people were constantly damaging their pickups when they were hand wound. They were just loose and laying everywhere. Um, they were a mess. People would just be shoving copper wiring up underneath their pickup covers to uh, just try to hope it still works and then not have to ever take their guitar apart again. But yeah, for all those years, 20 some years, hand wound pickups. So everything was way different. So that's why they're all still so different, especially the vintage stuff before 1965, four around there before the machine started doing it. So that'll answer some of your questions, I hope, as well. Um, things today are pretty consistent. Um, some people still will wind pickups for you. Um, there's no reason for it because you can set a machine to do it exactly how you want. But people would actually wind them loose, they'd get lazy, and they'd, you know, you try doing pickups 10,000 winds at a time <laughs> and do that all day and try to be accurate. You know, you can start doing this and you get lazy and I mean you got stuff and you try to just kind of hide it when you're <laughs> winding on there. So there's so many things that can make these things sound different. But does the wood actually make a difference? No, the wood... Here's a, here's a quick story. 
Um, and this here is from Leo Fender's lips himself. Um, back in the day, he was building the tellies, and he uh, would use um, ash, okay, for everything, and do um, nice, clear colors. We could see some wood grain, see, make some stuff pop, you know, and really, you know, lay on the thick clear coats and sometimes the fan, you know, just whatever happened, happened, you know. But, um, he ended up going, man, you know, it's kind of expensive wood, you know, for back then, because uh, he was making guitars that, making the assembly line so that people, like average women, could do the work. Again, most of the employees were women. They could, I mean, just simply, you know how it's, these are, tellies are less than straps. But you have, you know, stuff that's already on a pick guard, you screw it in, you screw the neck on, I mean, you screw on parts and you put it together and that's out the door. Cheapest instruments around, you know, the Gibsons were by far much more expensive, still being basically handmade back then. But, Leo Fender says, man, I'm using all this ash, which he still, and which they still do use on all their premium guitars. Um, but he's like, man, we're out here and up in California and there's just all this alder alder trees just everywhere so God let's just use that so he started working with that and it's like well the ash takes those finishes well you know it, it's just a good wood that you don't have to work with much that you can almost just start applying clear coats to or a very thin coat of a color so you can still again see the grain going through there again like this so they would use like an alder for that you know um, because hell you know it's pretty so you get the nice looking sunbursts and stuff and, uh, or the ash they would use for that so again they would use the ash for the stuff where they want you to see the wood grain by the time the straps came out in 54 that he was using a lot of alder for the straps um, a lot cheaper. It was growing right there. His problem was just drying it out, because um, you know still today they're. Uh, it's funny. Um, it's people try to get the wood as dry as humanly possible. I mean, no, no um, wet stuff in there at all. Just I mean, they have a. They extract every last bit of humidity out of a guitar. I mean, just suck that thing dry. I have machines that will do that for you. And that's what it's all about these days, you know, it's all automated. But back then, uh, Fender, he said himself, it makes no difference in sound. You know, we'll just take, you know, for guitars that are going to be black or they're going to be, you're not going to see any wood grain on, we'll just use the alder. We've got it by the truckloads right in our own backyard here in Fullerton, California. So that's where that came from. And he himself, they sound no different. It's just the ash has a cool looking grain and the finish applies easier than it does with the alder. You have to do more prep with the alder and that even then if you have Bondo or whatever you would, you know, wood putty back then, and then paint the guitar black, you don't see none of that crap. You know, you could have a big knot hole and then stick some chewing gum in there and <laughs> do whatever. But that's kind of how that all happens. So, no, you know, you go slam a maple a nice flame maple like on that Les Paul there. Um, with or without that maple top, if the pickups are properly potted like they are, it would sound no different if that guitar was 100% mahogany or in the, that would be by taking that maple top off of there. It would sound no different when it's plugged in. Acoustically, yeah, it would sound different. Then it just comes down to the pickups you use if they are potted. Okay, and if you had unpotted pickups, which people search for, they want to hear that maple top on that guitar. They want to hear a little bit more brighter tone out of that guitar. And yes, what some people will call bad pickups will pick that up. If they are microphonic, yeah, purely just those old nasty pickups, yes it will pick up that brightness. Okay? And if you take your arm and lay it on there, 
and kind of stop more of the vibration, it will pick up that you did that or lay it against your bed. Every little thing will be picked up with microphonic pickups. Again, today's pickups, um, not much of a chance of that happening at all unless you just get a bad pickup. Then everybody tries to replace that real quick because it's just simply not a uh, desired thing. Let me see where the time's at. Of course, I've been rambling forever, but this ain't going to be as long as all of them. Okay. Um, I'm going to say finally, but again, on pickups like these where you get them, I mean, where they're totally covered or pretty much covered, again, this uh, is a right about the range. It's here 78, but right before this, you would get a lot, especially the really junky guitars um, that you would get from the Spiegel catalog or Sears and all that. Man, those are just the worst pickups around. You'll find these from all the Chibson or the you know fake Gibson guitars in China. All of them, hardly any of them are ever potted. You just go up there and just touch them and say, clink, 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 clink. Um, these, no, quiet as a mouse. I can bash this guitar like that, and you're, that's not going to pick up through here. So these are very well potted pickups. And it's over top of the screws, everything. I mean, it's filled. Can you fill it up too much? Yeah, you can over pot it, which is not a great thing, or you can under pot it, which is worse. Most, some people can't really tell the difference other than it's just not making any external noise, which is nice. Um, and also, again, remember that if uh, on those windings, when you start, um, like here, if you have a guitar, here's a fender strap with a um, maple cap on it, too. Um, that um, if the pickups are mounted on a pit guard, or if they're stuck directly into the body like this, does it change the sound at all? No, zero on this guitar with these pickups. Okay, so there are a lot more questions other than the definitive yes or no. Of course, it's much deeper than that. Um, so these are very well potted pickups. It, they're not picking up anything other than the string vibration people are talking about. Um, reads it, uh, the vibration is going through here and coming through here and resonating through here, resonating through the neck and then causing the strings to vibrate more. You, you aren't going to hear that. <laughs> Even if that whole concept does work to some degree, you will never hear it. You, you can, uh, the human ear cannot hear it. Um, you can barely pick up anything like that, even with the neck gone. Again, there's links down here um, to my buddy again, with the neck gone, period. The body, basically gone. I mean, everything is gone. And you're getting the same readings, nothing, and even a dog. And I'm not saying it just to have an argument of any kind. I'm just telling you the way it is. Um, even a dog would have a problem hearing any difference if there is any. But again, it's just the way the guitars are made nowadays. If you wanted to hear this maple top, yeah, you can go right now and take vintage pickups or things that are just made unpotted or unpot your own pickups. No, don't do that. Don't ever pot your own. And don't. It's... It's a hard thing to do. You got to do a double boiler and all this stuff, and you're probably going to get burned. You're probably going to screw your pickups up. So sometimes I have you do things yourself, but when it comes to potting your pickups, leave it to a pro. Um, that's just something you really don't want to mess with unless you actually get trained by somebody very good at it, and then that's one thing you want to leave to the pros. Um, but once you learn it, you're still going to get burnt. Okay? So again, yeah, you can make it so you could hear the difference with or without the maple top on this. So yes, you could actually hear the wood if you had unpotted brand new pickups or unpotted um, vintage pickups in it. You could actually, everything you do would then make a difference. So guitars at one time, yes, they picked up everything. Everything made a difference. So yes, you could hear the sound of that warm mahogany. You could hear when they put that um, 59, they put that maple cap on there for the, you know. Um, you could get some of that coming through those pickups. But, like I said, again, for the last 40 years or so, they've been so geared away from it that it's 
not very often that many regular people are going to have guitars that are that way. It's going to cost you a fortune to get a guitar that to most will sound inferior, buzzy, um, howling and feedback like a dog, uh, scratchy, everything. I mean, just, but some people just love that more than life itself. You know, just give me tubes that are 80 years old and give me um, pickups that are that old and they're falling apart and there's hardly any life left in them. They're down to uh, like half the output they were when they were originally made. <laughs> and again, with pickups, when you start winding them, like you'll notice that um, if you overwind a pickup, you know, go past what they normally do, um, it's going to get louder, 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 louder the more you wind it. But also at that same time, it's going to start losing high end. So it's just like cranking up your volume knob and turning your tone knob off at the same time. Um, as you wind them more, happens with humbuckers. That's basically why they are not as twangy as these. But it's also because a humbucker covers, it, it's eaten up this much, it's picking up this much of the string and another whole coil next to it. So it's picking up a lot of, twice as much sound. Um, it's amazing what a pickup does. If you take it right now on Fender Strats, the pickup is exactly, and they always are, unless it's a 24 fret neck, but on 21 and 22 fret necks, the pull pieces on your neck pickup are directly where the 24th fret would be. So they're always in that spot. They're always. It's just a sweet spot that gives it that sound. So it's just something you don't want to mess with. I, You can hear that. Anytime somebody makes a 24 fret neck, it's like, I can't have it because it's not going to sound like a strap. And so just know that too. And so if you start overwinding them and you want to push the preamp of your amplifier, don't do it by overwinding the pickups. Give, Put a boost in front of it. You know, if you're using tube amps instead of trying to wind your pickups more, because that's what gives humbuckers that little bit less bright sound is because they are wound, wound, wound again, and they're twice as loud on an average than single coils are. Single coils are generally underwound and meant to sound as perfectly clean. So if you want to overdrive and you're using a tube amp, you'll want to not get hotter pickups um, if you still want to get those perfect fender sounds just get something that will just boost your input a little bit okay so anyway that's about it once again Scott Grove GroovyMusicLessons.com telling you how guitars were how they some are some still strive to be so taking away the um, well, does the wood make any difference? Well, it can, and it used to, and it still can, but the chances of anybody at home being able to um, take a body off their guitar, take this one, and then take a loose sight or see-through body, put it on here and put everything else back exactly, you know, measure everything, blah, blah, blah. Put it back on here. No, it would not sound any different than this does because the pickups are so very well potted. Everything is shielded. Shielding makes a huge difference when you're um, using shielding inside here to try to quiet these things down. Don't use a, a ferrous material or something that is magnetic because you don't want the magnet screwing around and creating a weird magnetic field in there. So use something like, you know, tin or whatever aluminum foil that you know magnets will not pick up because that makes a huge difference um other things that can make a difference real quick i'm sorry um see how of course on this guitar three different holes cut out for the pickups and you know where i'm going with this and then i'll get out of here with these uh, old strat plus guitars there's a swimming pool route under here, so the whole guitar is cut out under here, under here, under here, under here. The whole thing is just gone. It looks like a swimming pool for mice or something. But none of that makes a difference. Even though they're suspended from plastic instead of drilled straight into the wood like that, it makes no difference. If I was to take these pickups and put in that guitar, it would sound like this guitar. Um, it's just the way it is. And like I said, these are 
Lace sensors are a whole different class of pickups, so it's hard to put use them as an example because they don't work like other pickups do. Same as EMGs and so forth. They don't work like regular pickups. But anyway, um, well potted pickups. It's not going to matter if it has a big swimming pool right in there. Now you go to throw some unpotted pickups in something like this. Um, yeah, that would make a difference and it would make some squealing and hollering. You know, but they did them um, like this one back in the old days. Everything just had its own place. And of course, you know, there's a hole drilled right here and one here and the wires go through here. You've seen a strat with its pit guard off. But they were set into little pockets like this so they wouldn't pick up anything else. So they were trying to keep everything as isolated as possible. And again, the bodies were made to not resonate. So people who are trying to make resonant bodies are either out of their mind or they have another plan for it, which would be um, pickups that are uh, microphonic to some degree so that it can pick it up. Um, you'll see Paul Reed Smith. Uh, the guy is all over the place. He'll sit around and tap woods going and it'll go doom, 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 sound like marimbas. Listen to that tone. Oh, body wood tone. Mm. And then, <laughs> the guy is such a moron. I mean, he's smart, but he's still a total moron. Sorry, Paul. But Paul Reed Smith, yes, you're a moron. I know, people always hate it when I do that. But he'll sit there. Go look on YouTube here right now. Listen, watch him. He's tapping things, and they actually have a like a G-sharp pitch. Boom! Does it now? No. <laughs> he painted it two inches thick and put another inch of... Um, God, it's everywhere. Polyurethane over the entire guitar so and no your guitar cannot breathe um, so that nitro and poly doesn't make any difference in your sound don't fall for that crap either it makes no difference um, it can if it's very 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 thin very very thin very 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 thin and way back long ago again with the microphonic pickups it can make very subtle differences but they didn't use poly back then on anything Everything was nitro, and they've changed the nitro from way back then, too, because everything was just cracked beyond belief. You've seen old stuff, and that formula has changed a lot in order to prevent cracking with the nitro over the years. So, anyway, that's enough of that. So, hopefully that demystifies some of that and answers some of your questions, so I'm not being hit from all sides. Well, then how come that? Well, here's how it comes. So it's a video for everybody who's asking, well, how about hollow bodies, and how about this, and how about these microphonic pickups, and, well, there's a whole bunch of me yammering, as usual, but trying to get across all the points that I can think of that might help you out, okay? So, again, drop by the uh, website, groovymusiclessons.com, to have some free lessons, um, see a whole bunch more of these videos, and what have you, and... We'll have a spot of tea. <laughs> okay, so you guys be groovy, and I hope you have found that informational. Um, peace. Check y'all out sometime down the road. Bye-bye.